welcome back to the channel. All right, today we are going to talk about the graph token. Everyone's calling it the next Google or the Google blockchain. What in the world? That's some high, high, high expectations for a crypto project that literally just came out. Are you kidding me? They're already giving it Google? Is it all hyped? Is it real? All that and more in this video. Let's check it out. All right, so first, let's start with Proverbs chapter 23. We are in the wisdom one-liners. So we're on saying seven. When you sit down or when you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you're given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies for the food is deceptive. Guys, uh, that is some good advice. Um, like a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm going on a diet. I'm going to lose weight. Well, are you really, or are you just going to eat those brownies and expect to lose weight? Food for thought, guys. No pun intended. All right, so let's get to it. So the graph, what is the graph? Well, the graph is APIs for a vibrant, decentralized future. So what is an API? This is an API. Have you guys ever gone to a restaurant? When you go to that restaurant, you talk to the waiter, have them order, and the waiter brings you food. The waiter is your API. Basically, what an API does is go get goes and get your food or goes and get information. So here's some of the projects currently built on it. Uh, they have Argon, Balancer, Gnosis, Ave, Synthetics, Uniswap. That's huge. Um, Uniswap is a really big um, uh, cryptocurrency that's using this. Actually, this is a quote from one of the Uniswap developers. Let me see. I'll read to you exactly what it says. So here's Hayden Adams of Uniswap. He says this about um, the graph. So, well, not about the graph, but in general. As a company, we don't manage or run our own databases. Right now, it's pretty difficult to get historic data from the Ethereum blockchain in an efficient way. This is what the graph is looking to solve. I mean, you have a guy who's developing on the blockchain, has almost one of, or has one of the largest decentralized exchanges, and he's saying, yeah, it's pretty difficult to get historical data. Guys, this is huge. I mean, everyone remembers how big Uniswap was. It was just one of those next things I was like, whoa, Uniswap, unicorn token. <laughs> um, but anyways, this video is about the graph. So if you have a comment coming from a huge um, company like Uniswap and they're partnering, partnering with uh, this company, it's kind of like, oh, okay, wow. Well, it's, this, this is definitely disruptive. So this is what they do. So like, look, you can kind of search it as a quarry um, and this is like the HTML. So it's almost like um, Google, but for developers. So the developers can use it, get data quick, quicker and easier and build stuff quicker and easier. So it just helps the blockchain ecosystem just get that much faster and that more adopted and more projects being built on it. So Web3 is a new stack for a radically better internet. Yeah, obviously. So this is how it's gonna work. So you have the consumers who are gonna to go to the API. Um, well, let me show you the, well, first off, here's the different things getting built. DeFi, governance, grants, philanthropy, marketplaces, entertainment, social, so so many different things. So this is how the graph network's looking to do it. It's trying to use indexers, curators, delegators, and more. So here's some more details of the overview. So what is an indexer? Well, the indexers are node operators in the graph network that stake the graph tokens. So if you'd like to participate in staking, you can actually do this yourself. You connect a wallet, MetaMask Wallet Connect, and you can stake your crypto with one of these indexers, which are these guys and you can stick with them. So if you want to add, you literally just delegate, undelegate. That easy, guys. You can hold it in your wallet. Um, currently, well, these are the curators. You aren't a curator. Um, so the indexers, they get like a stake reward. Um, you'll you'll be able to uh, see fee cut, rewards cut. So you get 95%. So if you get um, one uh, or let's say 10 um, GRT tokens, uh, you get a rewards cut of 95%. So basically what that means is um, you're only going to be getting uh, 95% or I'm sorry, 5% of the stake. So 95% 
is how much you're going to lose. So the percentage of index or rewards that the indexer keeps when splitting with delegators. So with someone like this, don't delegate with them. Hence why they have zero. Um, so stay away with, with something like that. Uh, 10 percent. That's that's OK. It's reasonable. Um, I would look for more or lower. But you also got to be careful with this. So the fee cut percentage, this means that sometimes they are not bad actors, but they they don't do a good job staying online. So you want to make sure you go with someone who's um, constantly staying online and doing a good job. Um, but then again, you get what you pay for sometimes. So <laughs> um, also keep that in mind. Uh, what was it? Oh, okay. So curators. Curators are subgraph developers, data consumers, or community members who signal to indexers which subgraph subgraphs should be indexed by the graph network. So basically, these are the guys who go and get more information and bring more onto the subgraph. So like Google, before Google actually became big, um, they needed more and more people sending stuff on Google, um, putting more websites in, more websites, more information on there. Basically, they call them web crawlers. So Google wouldn't be what it was today if it didn't build on it and add more and more data to it. So like a good example is go to Bing and then go to Google, search um, how to make a uh, how to build a house on each of those and you'll get completely different data and Google is usually more up to date because they do a really good job and they, that's just what it is. <laughs> if you spend a lot of time, you're going to get a good a lot of results most of the time. So delegators are individuals who delegate their stake to indexers to contribute to securing the network. So if you were wanting to um, stake your or delegate your tokens, you would be the delegator. Um, so you'd earn a reward for doing that. So by delegating to indexers, delegators earn a portion of quarry fees and rewards earned by the indexer. So quarry, or quarry feeds are basically when you go to Google and you search how to make a house, that is a quarry. So they get a fee. So in order to send out that inquiry or quarry on the blockchain, the company or whoever's doing that search is going to have to pay some GRT tokens uh, in order to get that. So delegators cannot be slashed for bad behavior, but there is a withdrawal tax on delegators to incentivize poor decision making that harm the integrity of the network. So basically, if you were to um, withdraw or uh, d or take off your stake, you're you're probably going to be fined for it. So it, it's not necessarily fined. It's more so it's something like getting rid of the speculators who are just going to throw in some money and say, yeah, um, I want this project because I think it's going to 10x within two days. No, they're looking to build the project. So if you guys are interested, it's it's something that's like hold for um, the long term. This isn't financial advice. This is just about their project and what they're doing. So um, yeah, the grab pretty cool uh, project. Um, in my opinion, I like it. It's looking to be the Google of blockchain. So everyone's saying it's really hard in um, blockchains in order to search information. This allows it to do it easily. So if you see their volume this year has been just steadily increasing. They've, they've almost reached over, what is that? 60 million quarries. Uh, that's, that's crazy. Um, so it's it's going fast. So they're they're building uh, that that's crazy. That's a lot of volume. Um, that's a lot of growth, and that's definitely um, showing adoption. So how does the graph index data? So a lot of people are kind of curious about this. So what they use is a subgraph manifest, which basically refers to the description of a subgraph containing data about smart chain contracts blockchain events and the procedure and the mapping event before they're all kept on the platform. So you have something that looks like this. Um, basically how the cycle works is when you get the subgraph or the API, you're going to have the information. This is so almost like a library and people are going to the quarries or APIs. Um, well, this say this is your company. It's going to be your quarry. He's uh, making a quarry to the API, which is your waiter. He's goes to the library or to the restaurant um, back in the 
back to go get your food. It's the same concept. So he's going into there to get the information and bring it back to you. And you pay your fee to get it. That's it. So it's going to be integrating it on the um, subgraph, which is just going to be like a, a long list of code and information that the API can read and bring back to you. So all of the data will contain a record of events and transactions up until the um, point that they have achieved finality. Then, then comes the graph node, which is what we're talking about here, which scans the whole blockchain database, gathers new data, and filters out those that are relevant and the queries that the users make. So basically, like I said, uh, you're going to have your library and your books are going to be your um, different AP not APIs, but your uh, different D apps and information. So it's looking to um, connect D apps to uh, the blockchain um, through APIs. Um, you have these guys. We already explained those. Um, we didn't explain these two. So fishermen, they check out whether the network's response to the queries is accurate. And basically, like when you search how to build a house, it doesn't show you something that's like, Oh, this is how you build a car. No, <laughs> it gives you the correct query, which shows you how to build a house. Um, so basically good data. Uh, the arbitrators, they decide whether an indexer is malicious or not. Um, so the graph counter council, as long as you're um, holding some of the uh, tokens, you're going to be able to participate in the voting. So right now it's not decentralized. They're looking to do a decentralized program. So the GRT token, ERC20 based um, token, you can kind of see the uh, community um, or the overall distri distribution of the token. 35% to the community, 17% um, early backers, 17% to backers. To, so basically, f f yeah, right here, 58% to the foundation just about, and the rest is to the community. And this is how it spreads out to the community. Education programs, bug bounties, test net, uh, curator program, public GRT, and yeah. So a lot of it is held by the inside. So it's good and bad. It's good that yay, um, they're behind the project. They're going for it. They're incentivized for it to go up. But then again, it's also bad too. Um, because they have so much stake, they can just be like, yeah, let's just throw like all of it on the market all at once. Um, I doubt they do that. Uh, that's just my opinion, because if they're building a project, they know that'll make the um, token basically just dump. Um, so here's the uh, token uh, distribution. This is what they're looking to do circulation wise. So this is the five year circulation rate. So they're going to start, well, which is this time frame right here. And it, it's got a really high inflation at the beginning. So keep that in mind. Um, and it's going to steadily uh, move out. So the new issue, new issuance, educational programs, curator. So these are the different highlights. So obviously the early backers are basically going to stay about the same. Um, but for the rest of the um information you're going to be able to see like this is how their inflationary rate's going to go um and it also states this indexers assisting in the testnet phase were awarded up to ten thousand to a hundred thousand in grt uh ten and in, in grt so i don't know when this was i don't know if it was like back when the tokens were hundreds of a penny or if it was now I'm pretty sure it was back when it was hundreds of a penny. So that current amount they, they got is probably 100, 200 X what it is or what it was. So keep that in mind. Um, mainnet, they are live. They just became live about three days ago and they got listed on uh, Coinbase. So this coin is pumping like nuts right now. Um, it went up from, it was like, 10 cents let me show you the graph so right now it's 71 cents so this sucker literally came from like out of nowhere <laughs> to nuts and ham within three days it's crazy um but yeah it, it's definitely boosting it's going nuts um so now that the mainlet is launched the graph is continuing to build so basically to sum it all up 
Um, what they're looking to do is become the Google of blockchain. So a lot of people are saying the DeFi space, it's really hard to search data like we showed you with um, Uniswap. Let's see. Uniswap, the comment that the, um, the CEO made was basically that uh, it, it's really hard to search data on Ethereum um, and search information. So, I mean, if a guy is huge in developing in the Uniswap uh, network, uh, Hayden Adams making the comment, as a, as a company, we don't manage or run our databases. Yeah, a lot of companies or blockchains don't do that. They don't want to specialize in that. They just want to be able to do what they do best and let everyone else do the rest. That's how it works. So if you want to specialize in something or do great, in something you have to focus on that only or you you can be a um jack of all trades or you can be an expert in one thing and um, be successful and be, get paid a lot so uh just keep that in mind with the project so that's what they're looking to do um is help other projects grow which which is great so it's not really looking to be competitive with others it's actually looking to um, help others grow. So you have an option of, yeah, let me pick um, Ethereum, or well, not Ethereum and Bitcoin, but let's say Bitcoin, Digibyte, and other cryptocurrencies that are looking to become the payment network of the world. Those are all competing against each other. With this project, it's like, hey, look, let's let's help each other, help build, and which is good. I, I like that. Um, so, I mean, look, everyone saw the need to create a bridge of information between applications and blockchain data, and the graph sought to answer that. So, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you guys thought this was useful information, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments description below. What you guys think of uh, GRT, the graph? Um, do you think it's the next Google? Do you think it's ready to move up? Do you think it's the next big thing? Guys, tell me what you think. Again, thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.